Let us commence this presentation on implant surface modification by considering the different types of implants that are available. Implants can be classified in several different ways. One is according to the composition. Implants can be made from commercially pure titanium, which is the most commonly utilized material. Furthermore, they can be made from alloys, which include other elements. One recent development has been the incorporation of zirconia. Furthermore, they can be made from pure ceramic, including zirconia. And finally, they also may have a coating such as hydroxyapatite. A very common way of classifying uh, implants, however, is according to their surface topography or roughness. This takes into account the arithmetic average of the roughness profile. Very smooth surfaces with an arithmetic average less than 0.5 are surfaces which are electropolished, for example, and these do not support osseointegration. A very commonly utilized implants, especially early on in the development of implantology, are minimally rough implants such as machined implants. More recently, we have the micro rough or moderately rough implants, and most current systems utilize this implant surface. Finally, there is the rough implants which have fallen out of favor over the years because they are associated with increased chances of biological complications. More recently, we've also had other developments which have aimed to improve the bioactivity of the implant surface. These have utilized a variety of different strategies such as hydrophilicity, iron incorporation, and nanotopography. A practical and clinically relevant way to consider surface modification is according to the way that implants have evolved over the years. The original Bronomark implants can be considered to be the first generation implants. These were minimally rough implants. In the late 90s, there was the development of moderately rough implants, which are the most commonly utilized systems in the market today. More recently, there has been the development of bioactive surfaces, which incorporate hydrophilicity, ions, and nano roughness. If we consider a comparison between first and second generation implants, the most telling differences between the two is the nature of osseointegration that occurs. Moderately rough implants are characterized by both distance and contact osteogenesis, as can be seen on the right, whereas machine surfaces are characterized by distance osteogenesis only, as seen on the histological section on the left. Here we can look at the quantification of osseointegration as measured by bone to implant contact. And we can see that as early as one week following implant placement, there are significant differences between rough and smooth or machined implants. This difference is maintained throughout the span of this particular study, which suggests that moderately rough implants not only accelerate the osteointegration process, but ultimately result in greater point to implant contact when full maturity is reached. Now let us consider second generation micro rough implants which are hydrophobic compared to third generation implants which are both micro rough and hydrophilic. In this particular study which was carried out in humans, we can see that at the four week mark, there is significant difference in bone to implant contact between the two implant surfaces. However, this difference does not persist at the six week mark. This is also consistent with other animal studies which show that third generation implants, such as the hydrophilic implants, accelerate bone formation, but ultimately result 
in the same amount of OSI integration as the second generation MicroRuff implants. So now let us consider the clinical relevance of these implant surface modifications. What we clearly see is a continual acceleration of the OSI integration when you compare third generation versus second and first generation implants. Furthermore, and very clinically relevant, is the finding that second versus first generation implants have greater osseointegration when full maturity is reached. Now, this has several important implications. It can potentially lead to improved performance in a lower quality bone, such as that found in the posterior maxilla. It can accelerate treatment time. And finally, it may be that the third generation implants can perform better in compromised patients, such as those with diabetes and osteoporosis. If we, however, look at the clinical evidence that currently exists for the benefit of surface modification, most of the clinical studies relate to the comparison between sec second and first generation implants, and that is micro rough implants compared to machined implants. There is good evidence to suggest that micro rough implants perform better in a variety of situations, such as compromised sites, such as the posterior maxilla, meaning sites with a lower level of mineralized bone. Furthermore, in compromised patients, such as smokers, in augmented sites where bone regeneration has taken place, we also have improved outcomes with short implants, which has opened up many more treatment possibilities, especially in the posterior regions of the mandible and maxilla. And finally, it appears that micro rough surfaces support real integration in a better way than minimally rough implants, although this can be surface specific.